When using a workflow that involves exporting from ArcMap to Illustrator, there are often times when you want to go back to ArcMap to get more data or make changes to the data you already have. The most important part of moving back to ArcMap and then forward again to Illustrator is that the data in your second export is at the same scale and shows the same extent as your original map, so it can be layered seamlessly on top of it. To do this, we need to set the properties of the data frame you're using to compile your map in ArcMap. To start with, I have some map data in a data frame, and if I toggle over to the layout view, you can see how this data frame sits on the page. So here I've got my 8.5 by 11 page, that's the default size, and I can make my data frame fill that whole page. Data frames are like windows that show sets of map data, so each represents data in a particular projection, in this case I've set it to Vermont State Plain, and with a particular scale and extent. So this is the extent, it's showing most of New England, and it's at this scale of 1 to 3,978,105. We want to make sure that the projection scale and extent stay consistent throughout our project. And the projection is fairly easy not to change. We've set it within the data frame, and if we go up to this layers, which is uh, what the data frame is called, I'm actually going to just double click kind of slowly on that and rename it to map compilation, because this is the data frame that we're going to compile our map in. And if I right click on there and go to properties, and go to the coordinate system tab, you can see that it has this coordinate system of Vermont State Plain in meters with NAT83, and we're just not going to change that, so that's fairly easy to keep consistent. I'll just cancel out of here. The scale and extent are a bit trickier to control, and this is because they change when you pan and zoom using these tools up here in the tools toolbar. So if I grab the zoom in here and zoom in on Vermont, I'm actually changing the scale of the data within my data frame, and the same if I zoom out, I'm again changing the scale of this map within the frame. And with a pan tool here, I'm changing the extent. I'm moving around the map surface within the data frame. So to make sure we don't accidentally change the scale and extent from one export to the next, it's a good idea to decide an overall extent at the beginning of your project and lock the scale and extent of the data frame that you're using to compile your map. If you think you might want to change the extent later, plan for this by including a slightly larger area now. You can always crop it using clipping masks in Illustrator or a frame in InDesign. So if I want to make a map of Vermont, I'm going to get Vermont sort of centered in my data frame here. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger than Vermont just so I have some flexibility. As I was saying, I can always go back and crop this later. And then I'm going to come and right click on my map compilation data frame, go to the data frame properties. And under the data frame tab, there's an extent pop down here. And right now, automatic means that I can change the extent based on the way I'm using the zoom tools and the pan tools. And I want to say that I have a few options. I can either fix the scale, which will lock my ability to use the zoom, and zoom in and zoom out, but I'll still be able to change the extent by using the pan tool. And I can set that scale at a certain scale. So for instance, if I was interested in making a map that was exactly one uh, to one million one hundred thousand, I could change that scale precisely and hit apply, and now my map would be exactly one to one million one hundred thousand in scale. I also have the option here of fixing an extent, and this will give me the ability to specify exactly what the extent is based on the coordinate system I'm using, which in this case is state plane meters. Um, but if I hit OK with fixed extent, I now don't have the option to use either the pan or the zoom tools. I can't move the data within the data frame. And this is great because it means that we can't accidentally move the position of our map, and one export will be exactly the same place on the relative to the page as our last export. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to come up to File and Export, and Export an Illustrator file, we'll call it just Map1, and then open that up in Illustrator. So you can see I have my export here, it's on the page. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see the data frame boundary is right here. And then I have my page, which is now the artboard in Illustrator. And I've got layers for all the different types of data that I exported. So let's go back to ArcMap and say that I wanted to add another piece of data to this. I decided that I needed highways on this map. I'm over here to catalog and drag out some highways for the state of Vermont. So the great thing about having locked the scale of this data frame is that now when I come up to File and Export Map, and let's save this as Map 2, if I open that second map document, which you can see now has the highways on it, 
say that I'd made some changes to this map and so I didn't want to just start all over again. Maybe I'd put some labels on here and I didn't want to just start working with this map too, but I actually wanted to copy the highway features from the second map onto the first map that I'd already been working with. I can come to the second map, grab the transportation layer right there. I'm going to come up to edit and say copy and then in this first map I'll make a new sub layer and then paste in front that transportation layer and it will fall into my map in exactly the right place. It's layered with perfect registration to my state boundaries and to my county boundaries. And this is because we kept the page the same size and we kept the data frame the same size with the same extent and the same scale between our two exports. Now if you go back to ArcMap, the downside of working with this is that it's really difficult to explore our data when the scale and extent are fixed. So we can't zoom or pan inside of this. Even if we go back to our data view, we have no options for zooming or panning. In our page layout view, we can actually use these tools on the layout toolbar. We can zoom relative to the page. So you can see here I'm zooming in to the page and those lines just keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker because we're zooming in essentially into a drawing of the way that the page would be displayed, but we're not actually zooming in on the data and we can't change the scale of the data. I'll zoom back out to the whole page size. So I like to actually make a second data frame. If we come up to insert and hit data frame, we'll get a new data frame and we can call that something like map explorer and you can see it's popped up on our page here in layout view. I'm just going to drag that off to the side so that it's not even on the page. It's sort of a space that is not um, designed for compilation of our map. It's just a place where we can explore our data and we're not going to fix the extent and scale of that data frame. We're just going to use it to help us organize and explore our data so we can figure out what to put on our map compilation. And we can copy our layers from one data frame to the next. So say that I wanted to put the states in this Map Explorer data frame, I can just drag it down into there. I can drag the counties down too. I probably want this Map Explorer data frame to be the same projection as the one I'm using for compiling my map. So I'm going to change that, come up to Properties, Coordinate System, Predefined, Projected, and then State Plane, NAT83 meters, I'll find Vermont. There we are. So now this Map Explorer data frame is projected in Vermont State Plane. I can switch back and forth between working in these two data frames by coming over and right clicking on the data frame. So say I wanted to go back and work in map compilation, I can right click on it and say activate. And then this data frame becomes bold in the table of contents and I see this little faded dashed line around the data frame in the layout view indicating that that's the active data frame. But I'd rather go and work in the Map Explorer. I'm going to activate that one. And then I'm going to go back to my data view so that I can see just that data frame. And now that I'm in data view and I'm working with this active Map Explorer data frame that doesn't have a fixed scale or extent, I can use these zoom tools again in order to get up close with my data and see perhaps the details of where these highways meet up in Chittenden County. I can zoom way in. And this is something that I couldn't have done with my map compilation data frame because its scale is fixed. So it's nice to have these two data frames that work together that have similar properties, but one where the scale and extent are fixed so that you can compile your map data and have it easily exportable over and over again to Illustrator, and one where the scale and extent are not fixed so that you can explore your data and figure out what you want to put on that map compilation data frame.